Welcome to a quick vid. Thank you so much for being here. Michael McCarthy, here is Paphiopedalum gratrixianum that I got sent from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents back in September, I think it was, of 2021. What do you think? Can you tell any difference? Can you see any improvements? This little orchid has been quite the trooper and has come a long way with its spectacular backup support of a PVC kind of decorative plastic structure that sort of looks like four coral. I did a video of potting up the orchids from that shipment. It was called Orchid Potpourri, Orchids Potting Up Something Five Ways. This was one of the ways I decided to secure my rather weak arrival of this Gratritzianum. She had been through a lot and needed all the support she could get. As you can see, I gave her maximum support. I'm going to link that video in the description. So if you're interested, you can check that out and see how I got this orchid into this pot to stabilize her with this beautiful peacock backdrop. It is quite amazing. It has worked beautifully for me. I had one little root to work with. That little root still exists, but there have been some root developments since then. I probably have about two or three more in there. Forgive me for not rummaging around in the leka, but trust me, this orchid is now not loose in the pot anymore. And still, I do not want to remove that beautiful support in the background. Eventually, it will come out, but that'll probably take another year or two in the meantime it is not bothering me and I must say it looks quite elegant matching this beautiful paphiopedalum. The reason I put that support in there is because of the word support. It needed all the help it could get. It was very floppy, very small. The old fan has since died off and what I was left with I did not exactly want to stake up and also I did not want to pinch off the base of the orchid so after having had wire around her at the base Trisha's Orchid Life sent me some plant Velcro, horticultural Velcro, and that is so much more forgiving. I have added that at the base. I would say she doesn't necessarily need this anymore. She is doing really, really well, but I feel a little bit safer maneuvering around this orchid where she lives because I have this whole frame to be mindful of as I walk around that space. That frame protects that orchid from my clumsiness and that's why that frame is going to stay. Should I see any flopping in the leaves as well, I don't want anything to be kinked at this point in time. Everything here helps with regards to how the energy is being pushed up into the leaves. I will take advantage of this frame backdrop and pin the leaf to fit the structure and keep it straight. This leaf was pinned a couple of months ago but it since has regained its strength and is away from the structure and holding on in its own right. This leaf right here is still pinned simply because it's a little bit longer and once again, it's not bothering me to stay pinned and I feel safer for letting it do so. But you can see how beautifully things have progressed here compared to when she arrived. There's also a tiny little new growth right at the base there. I also have the leka mounded up here a little bit because that is where the original root was. During the months, I have seen roots growing out of this area right here. They're in the pot. So she is progressing really, really well. Right now, all that's happening in the pot is just a soak of plain RO water. And this whole support in the back helps me to keep the orchid super steady when I do give her her soaks and flushes. This has been happening for the past months, also during the winter. Soaks are easy and then flush through and then I just leave a little trace in the reservoir. The reason my water looks orange is because I put some Sahara water as a soak into this pot in the previous soaks. So that Sahara water still seems to have an effect with what the media looks like. So the subsequent flushes, my water has remained somewhat orange, but there is no seaweed, there is no cow mag, 
for the time being this orchid is only left to her own vices because I really don't want to burn the leaves and I'm very very hesitant I still don't understand 100% how fast she's growing in my opinion she's growing faster than other paphiopedalums but I'm hesitant to add any kind of fertilizer at this point in time until I see a certain deficiency when and if I see a deficiency, then I can diagnose what it is and apply fertilizer or supplements accordingly. Up until that point, I am not going to be dappling with any fertilizer or supplements. She seems to be doing absolutely fine. Deficiencies I can correct, but over fertilizing, then I would ruin the roots that she's got and possibly also incur some leaf tip burn. And Really, at this point in time, don't want to do that. There is no need for that. She is getting bright shade and she has survived the horrendous winter that I've had. I think this is fantastic, but I may just be biased about that. So, Michael McCarthy, Paphiopellum gratrixianum, let me know what you think of the development and progress from when you saw her last up until now. I really appreciate your question and your interest in this orchid and having another look at her and I hope that you are impressed. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. One condition though that you please stay safe and take care. Bye!